Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. As the Lord entered the holy city, the children of the Hebrews proclaimed the resurrection of life. Waving their branches of palm, they cried, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. When the people heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, they went out to meet him, waving their branches of palm, they cried, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. O son of David, O king of Israel, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. My dear friends, today we commemorate the triumphal entry of Jesus into the city of Jerusalem and as he entered the holy city riding on a donkey, people took up palm branches and spread them on the road and began to sing Hosanna to him. Palm Sunday of the Lord's Passion is a day on which the church enters upon the mystery, reflects on the mystery of the death, burial and resurrection of her Lord. My dear brothers and sisters, as we enter the Passion Week, the Lord Jesus enters our hearts as he entered Jerusalem. And as we invite Jesus to enter our hearts, and as we enter this holy week, let us ask the Lord to help us to pray, to meditate, to reach out to the people who are in need, and come close to God. May this holy week may be a big blessing for us to come more and more close to God Today, also, as we commemorate this, the triumphal entry of Jesus, let us also pray in a very, very special way for all those who are affected, infected and affected because of this coronavirus and through the intercession of our Blessed Mother and Saint Francis Xavier, our loving Goitsa Saib and Saint Joseph Vaz, patron of the Archdiocese of Goa and Daman, let us pray to the Lord because we all need help. We all need God's grace. We all need God's mercy. Let us pray for this as we participate in this celebration. And now to make this celebration a meaningful celebration, let us prepare ourselves worthily to participate in this uh, Eucharist. And let us recall to our mind all the offenses, the sins that we have committed. And together let us say, I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my, my brothers, brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my, fault, through my, my most, most grievous, grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, 
and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Kyrie eleison Kyrie eleison Christ eleison Christ eleison Kyrie eleison Kyrie Almighty, ever-living God, who, as an example of humility for the human race to follow, caused our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross, graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering and so merit a share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me the tongue of those who are taught that I may know how to sustain with a word him who is weary. Morning by morning he awakens, he awakens my ear to hear as though who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear and was not rebellious. I turned not backwards. I gave my back to those who strike and my cheeks to those who pull out the beard. I hid not my face from disgrace and spitting. But the Lord God helps me, therefore I have not been disgraced, therefore I have set my face like a flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? My surrounded me, a band of the wicked besets me, they tear holes in my hands and my feet, I can count every one of my bones, my God, my God. my clothing among them. They cast lots for my robe. But you, O Lord, do not stay afar off. My strength make haste to help me. My God, my God, I have tell of your name to my kin and praise you in the midst of the assembly. You who fear the Lord, give him praise. 
all descendants of Jacob give him glory. Revere him, all you descendants of Israel. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brethren, Christ Jesus, who taught he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of man, and being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the gospel acclamation. Christ became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name. The Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Matthew. One of the twelve who was called Judas Iscariot went to the chief priest and said, What will you give me if I betray him to you? They paid him thirty pieces of silver and from that moment he began to look for an opportunity to betray him. On the first day of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus, saying, Where do you want us to make the preparations for you to eat the Passover? Jesus said, Go into the city to a certain man and say to him, The teacher says, my time is near. I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. So the disciples did as Jesus had directed them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, he took his place with the twelve, and while they were eating, he said, Truly, I tell you, one of you will betray me. And they became greatly distressed and began to say to him one after another, Surely not, not I, I, Lord. Jesus answered, The one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. The Son of Man goes as it is written of him, but woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed it would have been better for that one not to have been born. Judas, who betrayed him, said, Surely not I, Rabbi. Jesus replied, You have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to the disciples, and said, 
take it this is my body then he took a cup and after giving thanks he gave it to them saying drink from it all of you for this is my blood of the covenant which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins i tell you i will never again drink of this fruit of the vine until that day when i drink it new with you in my father's kingdom when they had <clears throat> sung the hymn they went out to the mount of olives then jesus said to them you will all become deserters because of me this night for it is written i will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered but after i am raised up i will go ahead of you to galilee peter said to him do all become deserters because of you i will never desert you jesus said to him truly i tell you this very night before the cock crows you will deny me three times peter said to him even though i must die with you i will not deny you and so all the disciples then jesus went with them to a to a place called gethsemane and he said to his disciples sit here while i go over there and pray he took with him peter and the two sons of zebedee and began to be grieved and agitated then he said to them i am deeply grieved even to death remain here and stay awake with me and going a little further he threw himself on the ground and prayed my father if it is possible let this cup pass from me yet not what i want but what you want then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping and he said to peter so could you not stay awake with me one hour stay awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial the spirit indeed is willing but the flesh is weak again he went away for the second time and prayed my father if this cannot pass unless i drink it your will be done again he came and found them sleeping for their eyes were heavy so leaving them again he went away and prayed for the third time saying the same words then he came to the disciples and said to them are you still sleeping and taking your rest see the hour is at hand and the son of man is betrayed into the hands of sinners get up let us be going see my betrayer is at hand while he was still speaking judas one of the 12 arrived with him was a large crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests and the elders of the people now the betrayer had given them a sign saying the one i will kiss is the man arrest him at once he came up to jesus and said greetings rabbi and kissed him jesus said to him friend do what you are here to do then they came and laid hands on jesus and arrested him suddenly one of those with jesus put his hand on his sword drew it and struck the slave of the high priest cutting off his ear then jesus said to him put your sword back into its place for all who take the sword will perish by the sword do you think that i cannot appeal to my father and he will at once send me more than 12 legions of angels but how then would the scriptures be fulfilled which say it must happen in this way at that hour jesus said to the crowds have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though i were a bandit 
Day after day, I sat in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. But all this has taken place so that the scriptures of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then all the disciples deserted him and fled. Those who had arrested Jesus took him to Caiaphas, the high priest, in whose house the scribes and the elders had gathered. But Peter was following him at a distance as far as the courtyard of the high priest. And going inside, he sat with the guards in order to see how this would end. Now the chief priest and the full council were looking for false testimony against Jesus so that they might put him to death. But they found none, though many false witnesses came forward. At last, two came forward and said, This fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and to build it in three days. The high priest stood up and said, Have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? But Jesus was silent. Then the high priest said to him, I put you under oath before the living God. Tell us if you are the Messiah, the Son of God. Jesus said to him, you have said so. But I tell you, from now on, you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, He has blasphemed. Why do we still need witnesses? You have now heard his blasphemy. What is your verdict? They answered, He deserves death. death. Then they spat in his face and struck him, and some slapped him, saying, Prophesy to us, you Messiah, who is it that struck you? Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. A servant girl came to him and said, You also were with Jesus the Galilean. But he denied it before all of them, saying, I do not know what you are talking about. When he went out to the porch, another servant girl saw him, and she said to the bystanders, This man was with Jesus of Nazareth. Again he denied it with an oath. I do not know the man. After a little while, the bystanders came up and said to Peter, Certainly you are also one of them. For, for your, your accent betrays you. you. Then he began to curse, and he swore an oath. I do not know the man. At that moment, the cock crowed. Then Peter remembered what Jesus had said. Before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. When morning came, all the chief priests and the elders of the people conferred together against Jesus in order to bring about his death. They bound him, led him away, and handed him to the pilot, the governor. When Judas, his betrayer, saw that Jesus was condemned, he repented and brought back the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and the elders. He said, I have seen by betraying innocent blood. But they said, What, what is that to us? See to it yourselves. Throwing down the pieces of silver in the temple, he departed, and he went and hanged himself. But the chief priest, taking the pieces of silver, said, It, it is, is not lawful to put them, them into the, the treasury. treasury since they are blood money. After conferring together, they used them to buy the porter's field as a place to bury foreigners. For this reason, that field has been called the field of blood to this day. Then was fulfilled what had been spoken to the prophet Jeremiah. And they took the 30 pieces of silver 
the price of the one on whom a price had been set, on whom some of the people of Israel had set a price, and they gave them for the potter's field, as the Lord commanded me. Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, You say so. But when he was accused by the chief priests and the elders, he did not answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many accusations they make against you? But he gave him no answer, not even to a single charge, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now at the festival, the governor was accustomed to release a prisoner for the crowd, anyone whom they wanted. At that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Jesus Barabbas. For, they, for after they had gathered, Pilate said to them, Whom do you want me to release for you? Jesus Barabbas or Jesus who is called the Messiah. For he realized that it was out of jealousy that they had handed him over. While he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him. Have nothing to do with that innocent man. For today, I have suffered a great deal because of a dream about him. Now the chief priest and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus killed. The governor again said to them, Which of the two do you want me to release for you? And they said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, Then what should I do with Jesus who is called the Messiah? All of them said, Let, Let him, him be crucified. crucified. Then he asked, Why? Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Let, Let him be, be crucified. crucified. So when Pilate saw that he would do nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took some water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. Then the people, as of Paul, answered, His, His blood, blood be on, on us and, us and our, our children. children. So he released Barabbas for them, and after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters, and they gathered the full cohort around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet rope on him, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on his head. They put a reed in his right hand and knelt before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King, King of, of the Jews! They spat on him and took the reed and struck him on the head. After mocking him, they stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. As they went out, they came upon a man from Cyrene named Simon. They compelled this man to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of his skull, they offered him wine to drink mixed with gall. But when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when they had crucified him, they divided his clothes among themselves by casting lots. Then they sat down there and kept watch over him. Over his head they put the charge against him, which read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then two bandits were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, asking their, shaking their heads and saying, 
You who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests also, along with the scribes and elders, were mocking him, saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. He is the King of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him now, if he wants to. For he said, I am God's Son. The bandits who were crucified with him also taunted him in the same way. From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. That is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, This man is calling for Elijah. At once, one of them ran and got a sponge, filled it with sass wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink. But the others said, Wait, Wait let, let us see whether Elijah, Elijah will come to save him. Then Jesus cried again with a loud voice and breathed his last. Let us now genuflect and pause for a while. Kindly rise. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn into two from top to down. The earth shook and the rocks were split. The tombs also were opened and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. After his resurrection, they came out of the tombs and entered the holy city and appeared to many. Now when the centurion and those with him who were keeping watch over Jesus saw the earthquake and what took place, they were terrified and said, Truly, this man was God's son. Many women were also there <coughs> looking on from a distance. They had followed Jesus from Galilee and had provided for him. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Joseph and mother of the son of Zebedee. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who was also a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. And Pilate ordered it to be given to him. So Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had hewn in the rock. He then rolled a great stone to the door of the tomb and went away. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were there sitting opposite the tomb. The next day, that is, after the day of preparation, the chief priest and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, so, we remember what, what that imposter said while he was still alive. After three days, I will rise again. Therefore, command the tomb to be made secure until the third day. Otherwise his disciples may go and steal him away and tell the people he has been raised from the dead. And the last deception would be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, You have a guard of soldiers. Go, make it as secure as you can. So 
they went with the guard and made the tomb secure by sealing the stone my dear friends these days we have been following the news on the tv and also using the internet watching so many things i have been also doing the same thing and i have been reading lot of news related to corona virus and i came across one news item and this news item speaks about a nurse from mumbai and she says when i first received the call to be on duty i was scared because i was called to go to a hospital treating coronavirus patients i've got two daughters and i have my husband they were all scared and they were trying to tell me not to go to the hospital not to report on duty but i did not know what to do i was also scared thinking of so many people who have been dead and gone those who have got infected because of this coronavirus but then i told my daughter who was in tears and the nurse said to the daughter all i could do at that point she said at this point is to report to go and do my duty because when duty calls you have to show up my dear friends she says in that particular hospital where she was a nurse and serving these patients there was hardly a minute to spare and she said she have been she has been missing the family so much she wanted to be with her daughters to daughters and her husband but she found it very difficult she was mostly in tears praying because the task the service required was very much challenging but the th few things that is to be appreciated about this nurse is that she uh, she was ready to go on duty she was ready to serve and she was ready to enter this hospital she had heard so many things fearful stories about this coronavirus and so many deaths which we know have been uh, the news readers and the channels have been reporting and she says i was scared i was very very scared my dear friends today we see jesus entering jerusalem jesus was always on duty and now also he wanted to go on duty by entering J jerusalem and doing his father's will he was scared as a human being we are all scared of death and as a human being he was also scared but he wanted to do his father's will by entering jerusalem and by suffering and dying on the cross he wanted to conquer death and give us everlasting life my dear friends jesus had a deep sense of mission to accomplish and that's why jesus entered jerusalem as the messiah in the gospels we find where jesus speaks directly indirectly about himself as a messiah people people say that he is a messiah but there were so many who were saying no he is not the messiah we need to wait for another messiah but jesus entered jerusalem as a messiah as a savior jesus entered jerusalem as the king jesus is the king of kings and he is not a politician so he wanted to uh, create war but he Jesus is a king of peace and that's why instead of riding on a horse he went sitting on a donkey entered jerusalem uh, using a donkey third jesus entered jerusalem as the lamb of god to be slaughtered jesus was ready to die jesus was ready to accomplish his father's will 
he was ready to accomplish the mission. My dear friends, this Palm Sunday helps us to reflect on this. May this Sunday help us to come close to God, come close to his son Jesus, and walk the way that Jesus has shown us. My dear friends, we are all living in fear. No doubt we all get afraid of death, but these days we are more afraid because of this coronavirus. And so many countries we hear in so many countries we see that there is a lockdown, total lockdown, shutdown, because we are afraid. But at this moment, we all need to say, Jesus, save us, because he is our savior and he can save us. He is with us and he will always remain with us and he will help us to fight this coronavirus. So let us pray to him in a special way. Let us now just pause for a while and reflect a few seconds on today's, the mysteries that we are celebrating today, the, on the mysteries, uh, the reflections that we have just heard. Let us pause for a while and reflect on it. Kindly rise. Let us together profess our faith. I believe in God, God the, Father, the Father Almighty, the Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We all need God's help and mercy. By placing our petitions into the hands of the Lord, let us ask God, to bless us, to be merciful towards us, to help us. After each prayer, let our response be, Lord, hear our prayer. For the pastors of the church, that during this period of lockdown, they may give comfort, guidance, and hope to the people in their care, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our civic leaders, that they may strive for the common good, showing compassion towards the poor and the needy, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For us human beings, we have been placed on this earth by the Creator that we may respect all forms of life on the planet and may show care and concern for one another towards building a civilization of love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For the sick, and especially for those affected by the coronavirus disease, that they may experience the passion of Jesus in their loneliness and suffering, and that they may be healed of their infirmities. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. 
Heavenly Father, we have humbly placed our petitions, our prayers into your hands. Accept them, and if it is your will, grant them. We ask this to Christ our Lord. Amen. I have been crucified with Christ. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me, who loved me and gave himself for me. I have been crucified with Christ. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the, the Lord, Lord accept, accept the sacrifice at your hands for the, the praise and the glory of his name, for our, our good, good and the good of all his holy church. church. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that though we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by this sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy. To Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift, we lift them, up them up to the, to Lord. the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right, right and just. just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, to Christ our Lord. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and Philip Neri our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, Saint Joseph, us, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life, and we praise and glorify you to your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. As we pray, the Our Father, let us pray for the world. Let us pray for all those who are affected, badly affected because of this coronavirus, infected, and those who are struggling, really struggling in various ways, those who are suffering. Let us pray for the world leaders also, and all those doctors and nurses and others who are involving, giving them the best of service. Those researchers and other doctors, scientists, who are trying to find a vaccine for this particular coronavirus. Let us pray for them. Let us also remember, in a very special way, all those who are celebrating their birthdays, those celebrating their anniversaries. Let us pray for all of them. Let us place ourselves also into the hands of the Lord and pray together. Our, Our Father, Father who art in heaven, in heaven, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come. come. Thy will, thy will be, be done, done on earth as it is, it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For, for the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, power and the glory, glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and with your spirit. spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Agnus Dei, qui tollis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, qui tollis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, Qui tollis peccata mundi, dona nobis pace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, 
but only a word, word, word and my soul, soul shall be healed. Make me a servant, humble and me. Lord, let me lift up those who have me. And may the prayer of my heart always be. Make me a servant, make me a servant, make me a servant today. Even though you were in the form of God, you took the form of a slave. You accepted death even on a cross, so God exalted your servant, humble and me. Lord, let me lift up those who have me, and may the prayer of my heart always be. Make me a servant, make me a servant. Make me a servant today. We cannot receive Jesus at this moment sacramentally. So let us all now make an act of spiritual communion and experience Jesus in our hearts. My Jesus, I, I believe, believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son you have brought us to hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection you may lead us to where you call, to Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. My dear friends, in the introduction, I, we requested, in a way, requested Mother Mary to intercede on our behalf. St. Francis Xavier and St. Joseph was also. Today, we need to pray and also request our loving and dear saints to intercede on our behalf. St. Francis Xavier, whom we lovingly call Goin Society, we go to him, we pray through his intercession so many times. And we have great regard for this saint. Let us now say a special prayer and request St. Francis Xavier to intercede on our behalf. The prayer is in Konkani. Bhagyunt Francis Xavier, Jesus cha mogan tuche kari sogrets lastale, dekun Jesus che nao ani sodvunni chi bore kabar sogrets, ani toshets Pede Wutang, Purgotum, Desa, Desani, Tungilui, Arituso, Chiu, Soron, Melui, Hepasot, Bapan, Tukas, Sorgar, Moimen, Bolo, 
आणि संवसारात तुझी कूड लेगून कुसूंक दिली ना ह्या देण्या खातीर संतोषान आम्ही बापाक दिनवासता आणि आता जेन्ना आख्खो संवसार आणि मनीस कूळ कोरोना व्हायरस हे बिरांकूळ आणि मारेकार पिढेक सांपडला तेन्ना आम्ही तुझी विनंती मागता जण एकल्यान ओगेपणी मागची आमचे ओत्रेक बापाक मानता तसले जर तुझे विनंतीन ते शार्ती पावे म्हणून मागता आणि सोपता पासो तुझे बरोबर चेजू वरवी ओवीत आत्म्या सोबे बापाक वाखांता आमेन and with your spirit and may almighty god bless you the father and the son and the holy spirit amen, amen. go forth the mass is ended thanks, thanks be to god, god. Hey